Right now, I'm gonna show you how to create a page peel effect inside of Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a realistic page peel effect inside of Photoshop, complete with highlights, shadows, and curls. And by the way, if you guys are new here, hit the subscribe button, and if you like this, smash the like button. Let's get started. So let's start with this little poster I created for my session at Adobe Max. And to get a file into Photoshop, just choose File Open, navigate to the file, and it will open in here. So what we wanna do, notice it shows a little lock. That means we're working on a background, and it even says background. In order to create this page peel effect, we need to pop this or float it onto its own layer. So the easy way to do that is just go where that little padlock is, click on the padlock. Now it's a layer. If I hide it, you can see transparency. And that's exactly what we want. All right, let's get started. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see the edge. And I just uh, held down the, the Alt or Option key and used the scroll wheel. All right, Control T. Command T on Mac takes us into free transform mode. And notice you see these little bounding boxes. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna curl these edges. So we're gonna right click and you'll see an option that says warp. Click on warp and now we're ready to go. You'll notice that we've got instead of the uh, little squares, now we have these little round areas now, these little circles. That means we're in warp mode. And to warp, what we do is we just grab a corner and drag it. So if we wanna curl that over, we can do it. And notice behind, you actually get a mirror image of your image. All right, that's great. Why don't we do a curl at the bottom as well? So we're gonna curl them both up a little bit. And why don't we take these corners in a little bit? And so what I'm doing is I'm just ballooning it out a little. Now, sometimes when we do this, notice it's kind of going bulging. We wanna push that in. So grab this little point there and pull it up. And notice we can just add a little bit of movement to it, but more of a wave. I just think it looks more dynamic and more interesting. And we could do the same up there too if we wanted. And let's go up the top and also maybe we'll pull that one this way. All right, so we've got a little bit more movement in there and I just think it makes it look more interesting rather than just, you know, flat edges. And to apply, all we need to do is just click on the check mark and now we're applying this. So there's a couple of things we need to do to add the realism and that's light. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna receive light in this area. Imagine the light is coming from the top left. This flat surface is gonna receive the light quite harsh. It's gonna shade it underneath, so we're gonna get a shadow under here. And this area here is also gonna have a little bit of light spilling onto it. So we wanna make sure we reproduce that in order to get the level of realism that we're looking for. So why don't we start with our highlights? Before we do that, we wanna get this little dog ear. We wanna make a selection out of it. So go down and choose our object selection tool. If you're on an earlier version of Photoshop, just use a quick selection, or even the pen tool would work nicely for this. In fact, the pen tool would yield the best results. But let's see if we can do it quickly with object selection. I'm gonna change the mode to lasso, and I'm just gonna make a selection around that dog ear. And you know what, did a pretty good job. Let's zoom in a little bit closer and we're just gonna clean that up a little bit. So in order to do that, you could just grab your lasso tool here and you could freehand it if you wanted. Hold down the shift key that enables you to add to that selection and I'm just painting there to make that selection. See what I'm doing? Or if you wanna take away, hold down the Alt or the Option key and that will take away from that selection. And that way you can just get it a little bit cleaner. Now, for those who wanna use the pen tool, I'm gonna to show you how to do it. For those of you who don't, I'll put the time code in, you can skip forward past this. But let's grab the pen tool. And it's actually quite easy to use the pen tool. You wanna to go to the very tip, tap once, go to the other tip and drag, and that's gonna create a point. Now, if you hold down the Alt or the Option key, you go back. Notice we're setting that new point in the opposite direction and we're gonna drag it out quite a way. 
and then we're going to go to that point drag and that sets another point once again alter option change the direction go to that end there and pull it in and notice that creates that path now if you want to go and adjust it which we do you could use a number of tools one of the tools here is you could choose the path selection tool or the direct selection tool. The direct selection tool enables us to select one point at a time. And I think this will work nicely for us. All right, so all I'm doing here is I'm just setting the direction of that path. And if you wanted to go, you know, hardcore, you could actually create your whole page peel just using the pen tool. So it depends, you know, how much you know, level of perfection you're looking for. If you're going, you know, high resolution print, you should use the pen tool and get a really, really nice edge. If you're just going to a uh, web, you know, social media or whatever, you don't have to bother because you, it's taking a lot of work, a lot of time and a lot of work to get something that is, you're not going to see. There we go. Looking nice. Let's hit Control Zero to zoom out. And now we've got our path. So let's go into the paths panel. We'll get our work path. Just drag down here to the little plus, and it creates a path one, and we'll call it dog. All right, so we've saved that path now as our dog here. All we need to do is go to the paths panel, hold down the Control the Command key, click on dog, and now it's selected. Awesome. In fact, what I'm going to do with this selection here, I'm just going to control J to copy that to a new layer. And if you didn't use the pen tool and you just use that first selection, you're going to do exactly the same thing with that selection active. You're just going to control J, copy it to a new layer. Great. So now what we want to do is we want to add the shadow underneath and we also want to add the highlight on top. All right. So with this selected, we want to create a shadow. So just choose the FX. Go down to Drop Shadow, and this will enable us to create a drop shadow. Notice you can drag with the drop shadow, so we can position it wherever we want it. It's probably going to go somewhere like there. But what we don't want to do is have any hardness, so let's take that to the left and just make it very soft to turn the opacity all the way up. So basically, we just got that shape in black. Click OK. OK, with that layer selected, hit Control T. Remember the free transform? And let's right click and we're going to go to distort. And with the distort selected, let's take those corners and drag them up. And then let's take this corner and drag it out. So essentially what we're doing is we're making that shape, make sure that they're anchored to the same area, but we're pulling out that shape a little bit. So it looks like the lights kind of just kind of pushing that down and hit enter. And if we want to soften it, just choose Filter Blur. And see what we can do. We can soften that shadow. And then we drop the opacity on it. So if that shadow is selected, choose the opacity, drop it down. And notice now it's starting to look a little bit like a shadow. Now, of course, you know, if you wanted to make it look super realistic, you could actually have that shadow feathering off. Um, I'll show you how to do that. Just create a new layer mask, choose a black brush, make sure it's soft. And then you would just make the brush like super huge and then just tap it just on the edge. See what I did? I just tapped it once and then that just kind of fades it off a little bit because the shadow will actually get lighter as it gets further away from the object. All right, so that's the first shadow done. And we want to drop a shadow down here. The second one's going to be much easier. And what we're going to do is we're going to select this because the second one is actually going to go underneath the whole shape. It's actually really easy. So we need to just go under and choose effects, drop shadow. And let's just move this to the top left so we can see what we're working with. Actually, move it a little bit because I do want to see that light. We want to match that a little bit. So just kind of drag it to match where that's coming from. So that would be kind of casting a shadow that way a little bit. We might play around with it. Uh, let's take the size, soften it down. 
And that's definitely going to help add some realism and then take that opacity and drop that down. And then just click OK. It's a little hard to see what we've got. So let's fill it with white for the background. So if that layer is selected, hold down Control Command and click a new layer. And the Control Command will put the layer underneath instead of on top. Let's fill it with white. Control Backspace, because that's our background color. Background color is white. So Control or Command will fill with the background. All right, so I'm looking at this and I feel like it's not bad. Maybe drop the opacity down. Nice thing about these layer styles, double click them, they come up and they're re-editable. So let's just drop the opacity down just a touch. All right, so now we've got the shadow. It's starting to look more realistic. Now we want to add the highlight areas. So we want to hit a little highlight on there and a little highlight on there as it's coming in and hitting that area. All right. And if this was warping more in the middle, you might even put a little shadow on that area if you wanted to go crazy. We're not going to do that, though. We're going to keep it pretty simple today. So what we want to do is load that selection. Control click or command click that loads the selection of that area. Make sure we choose the layer because we want to paint above it. So just click the little plus, adds a new layer, and we'll call it HL for the highlight. Now, what we want to do to create the highlight, we'll use a gradient. So make sure that we set this foreground to white. So just hit that little arrow there or just hit the X key to switch them or just hit the D key will reset foreground background color and the X will flip them to get to white. So you want white, then we're going to choose gradient. You want to make sure you're on the linear option. You can turn opacity all the way up. Make sure transparency is on. And then under the options, you'll see it under basics. In this case, I've dragged them out. So essentially it just looks like this when you get it. And so I don't like to have to open these things to find them. So usually I just drag these out above. So these three are always available. So that one there is the foreground to transparent. And now we're just going to start and we're going to start a little bit outside and we're going to drag it maybe halfway through. So we're going to see what it looks like. There we go. See what we're doing? Just adding a little sheen. Maybe try it again there. And notice as I go like this, it's going to be more subtle. And we go in here, it's going to be much harder. So let's go in about there. And we're going to add our Charlie Sheen right there. Control D to turn it off. Now we're getting some highlight areas, maybe a little strong. Let's turn the opacity down. There we go. And notice now the gradient is just giving it a little bit on the edge there. It's looking kind of nice and drop in that shadow. And we want to put some down here as well. So let's do the same thing. Control, click to make the selection, select the layer, and then create a new layer. It's going to pop one above it. Call that HL for highlight as well. And let's see if we can do this using the gradient. If you're not able to do it with the gradient, you can always do it with the brush. But we're going to go a little bit more with this. Let's drag this in quite a bit. There we go. So I really want to have some light hitting this area quite harshly. Control D will turn off that selection. Now, if you want to make it look a little bit more reflective, if you want it to look flat, just leave it. But if you want to make it look more shiny or more reflective, grab the elliptical marquee tool. And let's just drag an ellipse somewhere in here. Nice big large ellipse where it's just kind of starting to go into that a little bit. Hit the delete key. Control D to turn off that selection. And maybe we'll add another one here. And notice what it's doing is it's creating a little bit of a reflection. You know, like maybe it's reflecting a window or something like that, window light. And once again, if it's too much, just take that opacity and just dial it back. All right, so that's how we create an advanced page peel effect. If you want to do a simple effect, you can just grab a couple of those techniques and just apply them and get the result very quickly. But I did want to go a little bit more in depth for those people that like that little extra. Um, so let me know in the comments what you've thought of this. Um, do you find this useful? Do you like it when I go a little bit more detailed? Or do you like it when I just keep it simpler? Let me know in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you're new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. It's great to have you with us. Um, consider hitting that subscribe button and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. And by the way, guys, if you like this, do me a favor, hit that like button. Uh, what it does is it just really helps us with the algorithm in YouTube. And we definitely need some algorithm love. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time, I'll see you at the cafe.